Continuing the series of M2 MacBook Air configuration, today we'll set it up for data science and machine learning. I will show you how to configure VS Code for advanced analytics, which Python libraries to install, and how to make them work on the Apple Silicon, including its fancy new GPUs. If you have your terminal properly configured, you can just use that to Google things. Give a TensorFlow sort of a magic pill that will help it utilize the Apple Silicon GPUs. Step 1. Write your program or implement the corrections in your code and compile it again, then save it and then run it through the terminal over and over again. In the advanced analytics domain, this is not efficient. As you create your project, you can run any line of the code and, and interactively see what it's going to output and then come back and change whatever you want and run it again without any problems, without having to run your program once again. In the previous video, we've learned how to properly configure Python virtual environment, and some parts of this video will build on top of that. And actually, it's an important part, which is the creation of a Python environment where most wanted machine learning libraries that already support the Apple Silicon are available. So if you're not up to speed on PyEnv, I suggest you watch the Python installation tutorial from my last episode. All right, now onto the machine learning setup. On the higher level, you'll need just three things. Properly configure VS Code, a Python environment that offers libraries that are compiled for the Apple Silicon support, and those libraries. And that's basically it. So without further ado, let's address the first point on our list. What is a Visual Studio Code? Well, basically it's a fancy text editor from Microsoft. It's lightweight, fast, free, incredibly configurable, and it's a de facto standard in software engineering nowadays. Just download it from the official page and you're good to go. If you have your terminal properly configured, you can just use that to Google things. And I went over that in my the one before last video. And here we just select the version of our choice and that's it. I actually already have it installed, so let's just open it. Here you're just going to need a few things. Uh, first is to install the necessary extensions. So the first extension to install is Python. So you go in here and type Python and it's going to be the first one. And I already had it installed. So in here you're going to have this install button, just press that and in a few minutes it's going to be available on your VS Code. The next one is Jupyter. And also I have that installed already, but uh, you can go ahead and do this if you are doing this for the first time. So these are the only two extensions that you're going to need. Of course there are many more. I also usually install GitHub Copilot and I have a paid subscription to use it. Uh, but we're not going to go over that today. And one more thing we need to do in order to configure VS Code for interactive Python development. And you'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. So we just go on VS Code settings. And here in the search bar we're looking for Jupyter Interactive Window Sent. And we need to check this checkbox right here. And that's it, your VS Code is now properly configured for Python development. In a few minutes I'll show you how to use this for advanced analytics, but for now let's close this and continue with our installation. Now onto the libraries that you need to install, and I've saved them in my GitHub repo, and there's going to be a link below where you can just download them and install them as you go. But before we install the libraries, we need to have a certain Python version or a Python environment where these libraries can be installed. So uh, here I'm going to be using pyenv to create or to download and create a certain virtual environment that we're going to need. So let's open terminal and check the pyenv versions that we have already installed on our machine. Okay, we've got a system version 3.8 and 3.10. Uh, what we're going to need is a mini forge or mini conda version that will give you an ability to install packages with not only pip but with conda because some important libraries that are compiled for the Apple Silicon are currently available only in the conda package index. So the version that we're going to need is miniforge 3-4, well you can see this on the screen. Uh, so we can just buy and install this version, it will take a few moments and then it will be available for us to use. While this is happening you can go ahead and download the two lists of libraries, just follow the two links in the description where those files are located. And I've called one of them pip requirements, which contain libraries that can be installed from Python package index using pip. And the other file is called conda requirements, and those libraries are going to be installed using conda. Let me just briefly describe what are these libraries about. NumPy, which is short for numerical Python, just provides convenient math operators and uh, some advanced vectorization techniques which speed up your computation process. 
SciPy, which is short for Scientific Python, provides algorithmic support for your programs. Pandas is the go-to library for any traditional machine learning task where you are working with tabular data, which provides options to read, wrangle the data, basic plotting capabilities, and a lot more. Scikit-learn is a Swiss army knife that provides convenient APIs and user interfaces for the most popular machine learning frameworks. LightGBM is a gradient boosting algorithm from Microsoft and among all the competition like XGBoost, CatBoost, gradient boosted machines, LightGBM basically is much faster. Optune is a great package for tuning your models. It helps you iterate over the parameters in your grid much more efficiently, chopping off the unpromising threads and digging deeper into those that yield better results. The next four are connected with deep learning. TensorFlow is a Google machine learning framework for deep learning which needs no introduction. The competing algorithm is PyTorch from Facebook which is also great and there are additional packages that come with PyTorch which is Torch Audio and Torch Vision. And OpenCV is, well, strictly speaking, is not a machine learning framework. It's just a package that helps you conveniently work with images, but you're going to need that in, in deep learning in most cases. Matplotlib and Seaborn are the two visualization packages which will help you create beautiful plots when you analyze your data or create some reports for the management or for the client. And the last package on the list, Verstack, is totally optional. It's the one I developed and it's been in the open source for about three years now and it has been downloaded like 300,000 times by now. It contains some very useful modules that will help you run your machine learning tasks much faster. Check it out if you have the time. Okay, we have our virtual environment downloaded. Let's have a look. Okay, it's right here. Let's set it to global. And uh, the Python that we're going to launch right now will come from that virtual environment. We've downloaded our requirements into the downloads folder, so let's cd downloads. And here we have pip requirements and conda requirements. So the pip requirements can be installed with a simple command pip install our pip requirements. And all of them, all of the libraries in that list will get installed. Okay, we're done with these dependencies. Now let's open the second file, the conda requirements. And these ones we're going to have to install one by one because we will need to confirm some choices. And we need conda, not pip. Conda install light GBM. Okay, confirm. The next one is torch. Okay, torch install. Now torch vision and torch audio. Now we have all our packages installed. And one last thing we want to do is to give TensorFlow sort of a magic pill that will help it utilize the Apple Silicon GPUs. Let me show you what I mean. If you launch Python now and import TensorFlow, you can check which hardware is it configured to use right now. So it is TensorFlow config list physical devices. And right here you can see that uh, currently it can only see the CPU. Of course it will train very fast on the M2 chip or M2 Max on a bigger machine. But we all remember that presentation where on stage they said machine learning like a billion times. And of course we want to utilize the GPU when we train our TensorFlow models. So in order to do that, let's quit Python. And we need to install TensorFlow Metal. If we launch Python now, import TensorFlow and list physical devices. Here we can see that a device type GPU is now available. And trust me, on the larger models, the difference is just mind blowing. It's like five times faster to train on a GPU rather than on a CPU. And we're all set with configuring the software. Now onto the data science workflow. So the usual approach in software engineering is to write your code, then compile it. This step is not required for Python because it works through an interpreter. Then save it on your machine, then use your command line to run this code and the whole output is going to be displayed in the terminal window and if you want to change something or you have a bug in your code then you have to again go to step one write your program or implement the corrections in your code and compile it again then save it and then run it through the terminal over and over again in the advanced analytics domain this is not efficient because data science is a process of discovery working through your data you understand it you create different visualizations through this understanding you define how you will transform the data then you run different models and having to run your program from start to finish over and over again for every single experiment just won't work widespread approach is to use jupyter notebooks where you create your code in cells and you can run every cell individually interactively and then you can come back to any cell and change it you basically work in a single session from start to finish until you have all your 
discovery is found then you will have finished your analytical project. I don't like Jupyter Notebooks because they don't integrate into the production environment efficiently. Instead I'll show you a different approach where you can write clean code without any Jupyter markup overhead and still execute it interactively line by line if you have to. You basically start with a clean Python file and write your program here. So let's just import pandas and import a dataset. And I'm gonna hit shift enter and here on the side you'll have an interactive window where your code will be executed and here your program is gonna be created and as you create your project you can run any line of the code and, and interactively see what it's going to output and then come back and change whatever you want and run it again without any problems without having to run your program once again so we've imported pandas now let's import titanic or we can just select everything and, and run this whole code all together. And by the way, as we start to run this, we can see that our interactive mode is using a different Python version, not the one that we have used to configure all our libraries. Let's just have a look once again which Python virtual environment we have been using to install all the libraries there. Python versions. And it's this one, Miniforge. Before we proceed, we need to go in here and change the Python version. So select another kernel, uh, Python environments, and it's going to show you all your environments here. And it's this one right here, Miniforge 3-4. And it's going to ask you to install the kernel, just proceed. All right, so we're connected to this virtual environment and now we can execute our code once again. So it will run in this virtual environment. Now let's continue our discovery process as if we were executing a data science project. Let's have a look at the data types. Okay, we've got integers, objects, and floats in here. All right, so maybe let's plot something. Okay, and as you can see, the plot is being executed right here in this interactive window, and you can copy and save and do whatever you want with this plot. So this looks like an output from a Jupyter notebook, but your code is still clean without any Jupyter overhead. What about missing values? Okay, we've got missing values in the two columns. And say we want to impute these missing values. Now you can go back up here in the imports, import the library for that. And by the way, it's going to use machine learning models to train on the existing data and predict the missing values. And as you can see, 177 missing values for H were imputed and two missing values for embarked. And let's have a look at the missing values once again. You can just go up inside your code onto the line you want to repeat and then run it once again and you can see no missing values are present in the data set. And when you have finished with your data science experiment, tidy up in here in this project by file and ship it either to the customer or to the production environment without any additional modifications because this is just a plain Python file which can run on any machine which has Python installed and doesn't need any Jupyter extensions or anything else. And there is one more thing I want to show you. So we've got a data frame here and we can have a look at the data frame by just printing it uh, but it is not very convenient because uh, not all of them fit in here of course i can make a scaling much smaller but there is another option you can open the jupyter variables and here you've got all the objects that you have in your current environment so let me give you an example if you create a variable a and give it a number it's going to appear here and it says that it's an integer and this is the value. But the real useful part is to be able to open your data frame in a tabular format like this and you can interact with it and you have filters here. This is my data science setup. An example I've shown you is overly simplified but this workflow works great with projects of any scale. Just have everything configured the right way once and you'll thank yourselves later. Later.